everyone. Welcome to Writing Easy, the podcast that takes the act of writing, which can sometimes be not easy, and tries to make it less not easy. I'm one of your hosts, Mary Mascari. And I'm your other host, Melissa Long. Today, we are going to talk about fan fiction. Yay! I am so excited. <laughs> now, do you write a lot of fan fiction? No. <laughs> do you read a lot of fan fiction? No. <laughs> Like, why am I excited? I am reading uh, fan fiction for the first time in Excellent. probably a decade. So uh, I am living my little geeky girl heart out reading all of it this is, fan fiction and just falling in love with it. It is not like it used to be. Like, it's gotten a lot better. Like, it's a yeah. it's getting pretty legit. So uh, if for some reason you're not familiar with this, fan fiction is where um, someone takes the world of, of a another another book movie something like that and they write their own story set in that uh in that world and then and share it free on the internet there's just sites where you can go and you read fan fiction about stuff it's no no one makes money off of it um the only famous thing was that uh 50 shades of gray started as a twilight fan fiction mm -hmm. um and became very popular on the fan fiction sites and so someone bought it and then they changed the names obviously for copyright but yeah that's that's what it is but it's it, it used to be i have had this bias for a very long time which is um i have set aside uh that it was kind of kind of fake writing you know it's just kind of like you know that that's that's for that's writer for losers that's not really writing you're not making up your own thing and uh maybe that might have been that way at the beginning or maybe that was just my own insecurities talking but now um it's pretty legit like it's there's a lot of good stuff out there and people you know, uh, established authors will write fan fiction for, for fun. See, it's fun. Yeah. I mean, I think you're right, though. There was a, a really heavy sort of bias towards fan fiction mm -hmm. when I was first introduced to it. And I remember people just dismissing it or being like, well, you're not yeah. a real writer because you're just playing in somebody else's world. I remember authors being very vocal in the days of like, oh, like, like blogger and live, like all those uh, online yeah. blogging things where they're like, oh, stop using fan fiction. Stop stealing my stuff. And I never completely got it. And I'm glad that that's been reduced. I don't know. There probably are still authors who hate it. Uh, but mm -hmm. I love it. I think it has so many benefits, like positive benefits that outweigh this idea that like, it's mine and I'm going to take my toys and go home and nobody can play with it. Yeah. Yeah. So you've never written, you've never read any, you've never written any fan fiction. Uh, no, I, I mean, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I'm tempted, but like, who has the time? Uh, I, I haven't written anything, but I, I mean, my first writing was essentially fan fiction because I was taking a show that I had watched that I didn't like the ending of and rewriting it. Go. And so it was yep. like, I was doing it on my own. Cause I was like, I don't like yeah. this. This is not what I wanted to happen. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's cool. I've I've done a bunch of fan fiction. I did uh, done some Star Wars fanfic. I did some Doctor Who fanfic. Um, I wrote fan fiction. I didn't realize it was fan fiction because it wasn't that wasn't a term yet. Uh, I did one of um, of the movie Hercules. You know the Disney movie Hercules. Yeah. I did a I did a sequel with Persephone in it, and it was pretty fun. But it's a fun thing to do. Like when you're excited about something and you want to kind of be into it. How nice to do a a creative way of celebrating it. You know, I really, I think it's a, I think it's a very uh, nice thing and it's a fun way to write without any expectations or any rules. You can do whatever the heck you want and, and just play. I think it's very healthy. I think it's a lot of fun. So what are, like, we've already alluded to one of the benefits then of, of reading and writing fan fiction, which is like, you get to play in this world and you get to write more freely because you're not worried about all of the things that you have to do in your own original work in terms of world building and creating characters and, you know, identifying an initial plot, you can play in somebody else's sandbox. It's like training wheels. You know, I, I really thought it would be a great way to uh, teach people how to write by using fan fiction because it takes some of the elements out, right? You don't need to create characters. You don't need to do any world building. All you, all you need to focus on is story. Right. It's great practice. I love the idea of training wheels. And I also think if you're interested in writing television or you want to understand a little bit more about mm -hmm. how that works, I mean, television is essentially a bunch of people getting the room writing fan fiction for the showrunner, right? Like it is not, yeah. there's usually five to 10 people 
in a room working for to create this vision that the showrunner has that they created this Mm -hmm. original concept for and learning how to to sort of imitate or mimic or match the voice uh, of the characters and their style of writing that is a a skill that it can be hard to learn it can be uncomfortable if you've never done it before and fan fiction is that like you are trying to match a style and understand the world and create stories and something that you didn't originally develop and you'll probably get a different uh perspective too on character building right because you're you're taking it apart and you're you're you know getting inside it this is getting really gross um you know like like recreating a recipe sort of thing or or repainting a a master piece like you know how painters or artists will copy the classics uh it's kind of like that so you really can kind of to see the Mm -hmm. the inner workings a little bit better um it's a it's a great I mean, it's a great tool it's a, and, and it's fun why not you know the only as long as you don't pretend that these characters are something that you created where's the harm yeah and oh i thought one more thing you put it out there it, it's kind of practice in putting your work out right it's very low risk you put it out there odds you know people probably won't even see it a couple mm-hmm. people will you'll get some things but you can just it kind of helps you um practice finishing the act of writing which is putting it out publishing it because it's very, very easy and it's very low risk. So then you, you're you used to creating a story and putting it out and creating a story and putting it out and building that muscle um, so that when you go to do it yourself, you're feeling more confident in the, the story part and you can then, okay, now I can take on this. Now I can take on character. Now I can take on world building. Yeah, I love that that piece of putting yourself out there, right? Because that mm-hmm. is often a hurdle that us introverted yeah. writers struggle with, right? And we spend all, we like, spend years working on a novel and then we're afraid to query this. <laughs> we don't yeah. want people it's to like, read uh... it. We're afraid to share it with our critique groups. And yeah. this is a like a low risk way to like, yeah, like you said, maybe a, only a few people will see it. That's okay. And like yeah. you can get some immediate feedback and continue working. And you're still... I mean, it still counts. You're still a writer. You're mm-hmm. creating things, and you know if if that's if that's how you want to do. Like if you're not like, there's nothing wrong with that. There's so many ways to be an artist in the world that aren't, you know, making a living at it in, in a huge way. Our culture seems to think that that's the only way to to be successful as an yeah. artist, and it's just not true. Um, and so this is something you're creating. You're putting it out for other people. They're enjoying it. That that seems to meet all the criteria to me. Mm-hmm. I like it. So, yeah. Yeah. And the point that you made about sort of like dissecting something or pulling it apart and understanding how it works that you have to do when you're writing fan fiction, I will say that that is what drew me back into fan fiction. So a few episodes ago, we were talking about doing, I was talking about doing like the analytical reading and like I was annotating the Harry Potter books. Yeah. Uh, which I am doing. I'm so proud of myself. I've been doing it. And I told my writers group about it and they were looking at some sample pages and they're like, and one of them was like, you know, so I'm reading this. I just finished this Harry Potter fanfic. (laughs) I was like, you read Harry Potter fanfic? And that's how this conversation started. Um, And I'm reading uh, All the Young Dudes, which is uh, a Marauders fan fiction. It it is like 500,000 words. It is really long. Oh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and fantastic but it actually was super helpful to like understand okay like how did this writer go in and like build upon the foundation that was already there but also offer something totally fresh that also feels like canon or feels like the original mm-hmm. source so like i found myself also like annotating <laughs> annotating the fan fiction nice. like oh look at what they did look at this pattern look at why do i like this better than the original source right so it still yeah. is a great learning opportunity and there are phenomenal writers doing yeah. this for free cuz because they're passionate about it just for fun I, you know, I, I, my opinion on it changed completely when I heard N.K. Jemison mention that she, oh yeah, I was bored, so I wrote some fan fiction. I'm like, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, <laughs> okay, hold on. My mind's just, I completely changed because she's amazing. She writes fan fiction, so there you yeah. go. That's all the justification you need. So, um, so we've got because it's it's helpful. You can learn things. We've got uh, you can play around in the world and explore and create and without low risk or with low risk. Uh, it's a perfectly legitimate art form on its own. Perfectly legitimate. Uh, definitely. I would 100% agree with that. 
you you can also do things that didn't happen in the real books. I found with mm-hmm. this series that I'm reading, the the author kind of course corrected some of the problematic things in the nice. Harry Potter books. And I am like, I am down with it. It's way more inclusive. There are queer characters. It's a little bit more grown up. Um, I, yeah. you know, and in terms of like, it feels a little real, a little bit more grittier. The emotional depth is a little bit better. The female characters are portrayed in a better way than I think they are in the original material. And so that nice. was another, I think, empowering thing to have a fan community that can say like, Hey, we love this world and we can tell even better stories that I feel a little bit more modern, like a more like where yeah. we're at right now. That, and that's really, yeah, it's really good. Cause it, it, some of these times there, we love them, but they're problematic. You can you know, modernize them. The only thing that, that people tend to, the, the, the things to avoid are, are Mary Sue's self inserts, which again, you can write them, you know, whatever you want. Uh, but the community tends to, it's not as well received to say like, uh, I'm going to write Mary Potter and it's <laughs> it's about me being the hero of Harry Potter and I do it better than, you know, like, well, I mean, if and again, if that's what you want, go for it, like whatever. Um, but that's I think that uh, is something you might not get a good reaction to. But again, it, you know, do what you want. Yeah. <laughs> like it, and, uh, the other thing to to kind of warn people about is there sometimes that something that happens in fan fiction is you get what's called slash fiction mm-hmm. um which is it tends to be uh it's more uh, adult situations people say oh i think these two characters would hook up and i'm gonna show you how snape and dumbledore get it on you know uh like okay uh so if that's not something you're into just kind of be aware for that, that that's out there and just you know you could they they should mention like oh here's the rating of this here's what's in here so you know what to expect but just be aware that, that that's out there, but that's not everything at all. But not by a long shot. Yeah. Um, you know, people seem to think that, oh, fanfic is slash fic. And it's not. They're different things. Yeah. Um, and if you don't want slash fic, you can avoid it. If you do, go it's for there. it. It's there. Yeah. <laughs> it's all there. But I, you know what? A lot of the fanfiction sites are really good about categorizing, mm-hmm. tagging, um, doing yeah. content warnings and trigger warnings, which I really appreciate because, like you said, yeah. you don't want to get into something and then be like, "Whoa, I didn't, I didn't know we were going there." Uh, yeah. So you can get exactly what it is that you're looking for, and I think the the slash fic also like hits that shipping, like, "Ooh, which who are you shipping?" Right? And like, I feel like that sometimes is a way of demeaning fan fiction and like dismissing it as it's not real. It's just a bunch of people who are obsessed with this this sort of one true pairing or this one relationship couple. And I'm like, yeah, maybe it is. But I would also argue that, uh, like I had a friend who was uh, obsessed with Vampire Diaries fan fiction and she had a ship that she loved. And I remember watching the show and I'm like, I get it because the show is based off of books and in books, this relationship happens. And in the show, they made a deliberate decision not to allow that to happen. And people were upset. And so of course, like, the, the fan fiction community and space allows you to see what that story could look like um, on television, even though yeah. it's written, right? So, like, I, I do think that I don't like the casual dismissiveness of, oh, well, because it's relationship-focused or because it's focused on these, it's just a bunch of, like, teenage guy-crazed girls <laughs> who are, like, yeah. writing. That's not true. Uh now, will you find some stuff that's not as refined? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's going to be some stuff you're like, oh, that's not very But uh, you also find some amazing stuff. So, you know, it's like the real world. It's like the <laughs> real world. There's some good stuff or some bad stuff. It's hey, like just... self-publishing, indie publishing, regular publishing. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, it's all free, man. You just pick what you like. If you don't like this, stuff, stop reading it. Yeah. Move on to the next thing. Great. It's all good. No risk. Yeah. So cool. So I think I'm going to write some fanfic this afternoon. I don't know. I, I'm so tempted, but I, I need to stick to my. You got, you got work to do. Work. Yeah, actually, I got work to do too. But, uh, but I might, I don't know. Like, I think I, I am, I've convinced myself that I should do some fanfic. Just whip okay. something up real slow. Yeah, real quick. Maybe you don't finish it and you just start it, you know? Yeah. It's practice. Maybe it's a nice little warm up mm-hmm. before you start writing, you know, or, you know, when you're feeling like, oh, I don't have any brain. Like, all right, just, just work on your little fanfic. Yeah. A little 30 minute sprint. <laughs> yeah. It's good for you. Builds character. <laughs> <laughs> well, excellent. Well, I hope you all uh, enjoy this. Maybe you go out and write and read some fanfic of your own. Um, 
if you can, please try to tell someone else about the podcast that really helps uh, other people find us and helps our audience grow and just makes everybody happy. So um, besides that, we'll just remind you that writing is hard. So take it easy. I'm Mary. And I'm Melissa. Bye. Bye. Bye.